Hey, this is this is Pops with Confessions by the Steering Wheel. Somehow I got grease on my pants. Now, today's episode, I'd like to talk to you. I thought I had my glasses on. I don't. They're over here. About service managers and my experience, not necessarily being one, filling in for one or two. But for the most part, they don't like my style. I'm too straightforward. Customers usually appreciate it to a higher percentage of the average weasel. But at the same time... I figured I would give you guys an update on what I think, when you get down to it, a manager should be. It's sprinkling a little bit where I am now, so I just wanted to put the windows down. What we have is often a complete divide, and a three-way divide, between service technician, customer, service manager. And if you want to, there's the fourth one. Middle management. It's a seri- no, this isn't middle management. You like to think you are, but you're not. I've got a five step, if I remember correctly, five things for each job that can help you out. Now, you won't need all five, and some of you are going to sit there and say, What the hell do you think you know? What are you going to. Shut up. And if you're going to argue, get off the channel. I don't even want to see you here. But listen to the five now from my experience of 43 years of being a service technician for almost all of it. And for 10 years, I was self-unemployed, drove school bus for five years. So I've got another perspective there as well. But what I'm going to come up with is five different and distinct things that a service manager has to do with some of your larger, uh, you're going to call them quotes. Throw that word out out the window. Guesstimates. It doesn't matter how good you are, it's only a guesstimate. But there again, you'll get closer to quote if you follow the following five things carefully all right now let's just say your tech went out and to well i'll use the one example that went bad well this isn't to say that i'm gonna slam somebody left and right this is not necessarily a gripe session but there's going to be a lot of gripes here because a customer was insane incensed and was considering buying a john deere loader instead of a kamatsu or a cat And there's even a deeper thing behind that one. We'll stop there. So I went out and uh, had a problem with a loader over overheating. There were two of two of us available, but I went out on it, and I was able to show the operator that when they ran it, they'd start the machine up, and little teeny tiny just bubbles would start up through it. So we decided to put it under a rev it up more bubbles would come, put it under a load, and it just foam. It wasn't critical, but they knew it was overheating, and they were pushing coolant out faster than, the, than it was overheating sometimes. So it showed it to them, yep, okay. Brought it in, tore it down, found a little bitty bad spot in a gasket. Now, he's looking at 15,000 plus hours on this machine, but we'll say right around 15. He wanted a quote for a reman engine. Everybody else is going apoplectic on me mentioning that. I said it'd be the best thing to go. Nobody's arguing about what's getting done, what isn't done. That's too much work. That and then all I heard was arguing. Now let's go back from that part and just say how it should have gone. Service man goes out in the field, finds there's a definite head gasket problem. Comes back to the service shop and tells him there's a definite head gasket problem. That's why he's overheating. We have to tear into the engine. We can do it on site, but the decision is to bring it in because we're probably going to go in depth further. Bring the thing in because it's more advantageous than driving back and forth. It was about a 40 to 45 mile trip. So 80 to 90 miles round trip. He just says three or four trips. No thanks. Just truck it. So that part was taken care of. Trucking was all gone. Hands off. That made it easier. But you have to put that on your service manager's list. Tech goes out and looks at after the complaint. Complaint is overheating. So you have overheating. Complaint. Tech finds Combustion leak, and it's obvious. All right, machines brought back. One, two, three, just like that. Simple as can be. Now, what was the original complaint? Overheating again. Tech sent out, finds out the reason for overheating and that the complaint is accurate. Trucking is done. Trucking comes in. Customers covering trucking. So part of your final guesstimate is already done. Now, once it comes rolling in the shop, we notice it's running funky. The water separator, primary filter, 
is nearly full of water, and they've been having consistent trouble with that. Fuel tank leak. We know this immediately because of the amount of water that's in there. And one guy had seen water like that, and it was a fuel tank leak. Either there was a crack or a fitting out or something was wrong. We knew this. Okay, done. So now you have, you're starting your list. The complaint, overheat, tech finds combustion leak. Bring the machine in. Trucking is done. Look at the filter. Now you have a water problem and a tank that has to be taken care of. Your list is still going and you haven't even gotten to research yet. Well, now at this point, the tech is still going over the machine further to look at to look at it. And he's torn it apart or tearing it apart while you're at this level. So what's it going to be? You're wondering if it's going to be head gasket or something else. And the customer says, I'm thinking of a reman. So you're coming over here on a reman engine. What should be going on now? Tech finds out that it's a head gasket, definitely a head gasket problem. Everything else looks okay. 15,000 hours, we take the sidestep. And we come over here. Customer says reman engine. I get a warranty on a nearly new engine, and you guys get a quick and simple swap around, and it'll save me what a week or two, maybe a month's worth of time. Maybe. So we're down here to this level. Well, while this tech is tearing it apart, you're over here researching, thinking well, what's going to be for an overhaul? Is it going to be more advantageous to do a reman? Specifically in our case, Komatsu dealer, Komatsu reman. Expensive, but massive warranty. That's what the customer is looking at. So while you're looking this part over, you're making phone calls around trying to find out, well, you know, we don't do these very often. So let's make a phone call and find out who does what. So you ask and they give you a number. And that's usually about so many hours and you get a work order from one where they did this. One was an overhaul possibly from one branch and another branch just did a reman within the last year and look at that. Anything past a year, you pretty much leave it alone. But now you've got two possibilities. So you've done your outside research. Now on the other side, you went and looked at Komatsu's figures on overhaul numbers. Not necessarily cost, but hours. And what's involved in it. Some of these companies give you a step-by-step -step process. Some of them don't. They figure you know what you're doing when you're at this level. So you have to take thought. When you pull that engine, what's it going to entail? The radiator has to come out of the way. So what do you do? You're putting in a new engine, you make sure that radiator is completely redone. Well, we just had a problem with the fuel tank, correct? We had a problem with the head gasket, and the tech warns them that because of this and the length of time, it crystallizes the coolant and plugs the radiator internally. They look at it and say, it's fine, it's not plugged on the outside. No, it's in a quarry, it's probably not going to be plugged up like you would expect from other locations. Couldn't convince them. They sent it out and repaired it and brought it back. The fuel tank wasn't put in the estimate. You see where I'm going with this? Let me tell you how it should have gone. Step by step. Complaint. Cause. Machine comes back, so trucking's covered. Correction. Reman or rebuild. With the hours. Reman. Now to put the reman in and out, you're researching within the company over here, and you're researching what Komatsu says needs to be done, or our time-wise and procedure-wise, generally. And then you're going to go after this, you're going to walk around with a tech, and you're going to start looking at systems that are involved. We ran in with three major, major problems. Three. But let's bypass that. When you look it all over, you list it. Now you're coming down here, you started simple, came down, now you're getting wider, now you're coming back in, all right? So what have you got? You've got the cause and complaint in the middle of your normal work order. You're going to do company-wide research, you're going to do Komatsu research, so now we're up to three. Now you're doing your walk around, once it's in the shop. And we're at that point now where you walk around and look this thing over with a fine-tooth comb. What systems are going to be involved and what is going to be uh, nearby? That when you pull it out, maybe there's some repairs we should do at this point. So you're making the long list now. This isn't just the walk-around. This is the inspection list. Hopefully you've done the walk-around prior to any of this without a tech because you have experience 
then if you don't, take your tech with you. Not some other tech, your tech that's working on it, which may be the guy on the road or maybe the one in the shop that's assigned to, depending on how big your company is. So what's five? The fifth one is the list that you're going to make that's the final result of everything you think needs to be done and the tech thinks needs to be done. All of it listed completely, top to bottom. Don't miss a thing. Don't poo-poo anything. He drove it in and found out the fan in the heater system didn't work quite right or it was seemed to be plugged or needs a general service at this All of it. He walked around and saw a wheel loose. I mean, you're looking into this long list. Why? The customer is going to say, some of them, you're going to get the 50-50 mix. One's going to scream that you went through all of that. Then you're just trying to suck more money out of them. The other one's going to say, cool, now I know, but I ain't letting you do it all. And you need to treat both customers almost identical. You're trying to scam more money out of you and smile and just say, of course we are. That's our job. But if you don't want to do it and you say no, We don't do that. You just have to be careful how you say no. What do you mean by that? The simplest answer is, if it affects the warranty of the engine, now there's a problem. So that's why we're making the list for you. We're trying to A, protect ourselves and get more money. B, protect the warranty of the engine, which of course is going to be Komatsu warranty, which in the end result is going to protect you because your engine will be in better running shape. And it means we don't have to warranty something because we took care of the problem beforehand. It's mechanical. Things go wrong. But we're trying to protect all of us involved. On the other side, the guy's saying, cool, I love the list. Give it to me. But you ain't doing it all. Well, you're doing the same thing. He's saying, great, we're on the same page. Really? We are? Thought you wanted more money. Darn right I do. It's what we're in business for. I told one, I told several customers one month, and it made the management furious. The customers loved it. One of them actually doubled a parts order because of that. They said, you're just trying to get more money out of you. And they said, darn right. So we're in business to take all the money from you we possibly can that will make you happy. <laughs> it worked. Honesty. Who knew? We're in a different area. Complete ethnic immigration area. And even though they know, they think you're trying to scam them, if you're honest and straightforward with them, suddenly they become honest and straightforward most of the time as well. So that's that's the step I'm looking at here for this. You've got your cause and your complaint. Your complaint and your cause are all here. You know what the correction is at this point because the customer made it very simple what the correction is. But what I'm getting at here is number four of you should be four C's, not three. This one's more important than the other three when you get down to it. The complaint. What's the consequence of the complaint? So what do you mean? You know what the complaint is? Overheating. What's the consequence? A, how long has he been driving it? Because now you're into troubleshooting. Now in our case with the engine, it was very simple. He wants a remand consequence of the overheating most of it out the window not all the water and the radiator both contributed the water being in the fuel would have thrown the timing and the operation off enough to cause the overheating spot overheating in the cylinder to cook the engine the head gasket the water was a big part of it and a plugged radiator as a result from the leak cooking the antifreeze plugging it consequences of that consequences of the complaint how long have they been driving what's been going on with it you know what the cause is what are the consequences of the cause what caused it yes but what happened after that well that's when you might actually find out you know the cause of final cause of the overheating now what caused this head gasket well yeah it been overheating because of other trouble and have been running poorly because of so now you've got the correction but in the correction they didn't correct it all what's the consequences of the correction the remanufacturing engine that you just put in there or putting in there well you didn't address this one the consequences of missing this one became a consequence for the reman engine we put in one and a half sets of injectors and a fuel pump for water 
in the fuel and we had to take the fuel tank out they had to bring it back again and trucking was on us I think this time and we had to take the fuel tank out and I'd already taken the radiator out and take it, took it back because of the consequences they didn't listen to here and the cause they didn't fix the radiator they didn't fix the tank, didn't want to look at it, wasn't in a quote, close your eyes. And we ended up eating a lot of that in the end result. So remember, there are four C's. The complaint, the cause, the correction, and the consequences of each step as you go through it. They say, well, in the, in the correction, in the cause section, that's where you get, no, because they don't think of the consequences of their actions. Oh, then this is no lie. I run into it everywhere I've worked. And this one in particular had an idiot look me square in the face and say, how would we have known? And two of us stood there and said, how loud do we have to scream for you to listen to no? Because to them, they were behind the desk. It was simple. So while you're in management and you're behind the desk, four C's for you to think about and to go back and ask the tech. Or, in other cases, ask this tech if it's an engine overhaul. What did you end up getting involved in for the same complaint and causes and then when you're done with that you will be able to actually have something closer to a quote than just a guesstimate just thoughts for the matter i got to get out of here because sooner or later the rain's going to pour on me remember four c's not three